right, let's stand and open in prayer tonight. Time to start. It's been a good day in the Lord. Amen. Amen. All right, there we go. Well, it's one minute till six. Y'all kick in when it hits six o'clock. It's warm up here. I ain't going to lie. What I got the thermostat set to, it just won't get to because it's so hot. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's working. But anyway, let's see what God has prepared for us tonight. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, for all of your goodness and for all of your blessings upon us, we want to give you thanks and we want to give you praise. We thank you, Lord, for the soul that came this morning, Lord, and we ask you to follow up with them, God, and I pray make him a disciple of you. And I ask you to bless those, Lord, that are in attendance here tonight that have made an effort to be in your house. Remember those that are sick and shut in and those that are afflicted and down. Lord, may this be the day. May this be the evening, Lord, when they see their prayers answered. We ask you to bless us and visit with us tonight, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Remain standing. You better wake up, boy. Well, do Lord, oh do Lord, do you remember me? Do Lord, oh do Lord, do you remember me? Do Lord, oh do Lord, do you remember me? Way beyond the blue. Well, I got a home in glory land, it outshines the sun. I got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. I got a home in glory land, it outshines the sun. We be on the blue. Well, do Lord, do Lord, do you remember me? I hope, dear Lord, you remember me. Well, do Lord, oh, do Lord, do you remember me? We be on the blue. Well, I took Jesus as my Savior, you take him too. I took Jesus as my Savior, you take him too. Oh, I took Jesus as my Savior, you take him too. While he's calling you. Well, do Lord, oh, do Lord, do you remember me? Do Lord, do Lord, oh, do you remember me? Do Lord, oh, do Lord, do you remember me? We be on the blue. You quit too soon. We had two more verses to go. <laughs> Why don't we sing? The wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansion, bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing, we'll shout the victory. Onward to the prize that's before us. Soon his beauty will behold. Soon those pearly gates will open. We will walk on streets of gold. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing, we'll shout the victory. Yeah, onward to the prize that's before us. Soon his beauty will be whole. Soon those pearly gates are going to open. We will walk on streets of gold when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing, we'll shout the victory. <laughs> all right, let's keep on moving. Let's bring our ushers up front and we'll take our 
offering for the night. Brother Blaine. I'm a running for my life. Running for my life. I'm running for my life. Running for my life. If anybody asks you what's the matter with me, tell them that I'm saved and I'm sanctified. Holy Ghost fuel and fire baptized. Running for my life. Running for my life. I'm a running for my life. Running for my life. Running for my life. Running for my life. Anybody ask you what's the matter with me? Tell them that I'm saved and I'm sanctified. Holy Ghost feel and fire baptized. Running for my life. Running for my life. Third verse. Running for my life. I'm running for my life. Running for my life. Running for my life. If anybody asks you what's the matter with me, tell them that I'm saved and I'm sanctified. Fire baptized. Tell them that I'm saved and I'm sanctified. Holy Ghost filled and fire baptized. Tell them that I'm saved and I'm sanctified. Holy Ghost filled and fire baptized. I'm running for my life. Running for my life. Hey, Amen. Give the Lord a hand as you're seated. It's time to pray. Um, want everybody to uh, remember our upcoming revivals and meetings that are coming up. Uh, Brother Cecil will be with us next month. And uh, they're in a tent meeting. There have been in a tent meeting in North Carolina. And uh, here things are going pretty good. People are getting saved and, and uh, filled with the Holy Ghost and everything. And I can't imagine being under one tonight. I, you know, I've <laughs> anybody who's ever been under them know what I'm talking about. Uh, last time I was under one, and I, it was the middle of summer, and it wasn't quite this hot, but uh, I was quite dehydrated afterwards. So uh, remember that that meeting that's coming up. Uh, invite somebody out, and uh, we'll sure that the Lord will bless you for it. Uh, remember my wife; she got back from uh, the I don't know the patient first she went to, and uh, they she went in a couple weeks ago with the same problem uh, over in Happy Grace Hospital and done an X-ray of her lungs, and they found two spots in the top of each lung. But they said she didn't have pneumonia or anything like that. So her breathing's gotten worse. So she went back this morning, and they told her she has pneumonia right now. So she's on medicine and stuff. But they said they don't believe that that's what is causing everything. And they compared the x-rays and the two spots she had a few weeks ago on both sides have gotten bigger. So I want you to pray for that. She's a little concerned about it. Uh, what are you going to do? I'm going to keep on going. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep on moving. Keep on believing God and doing what we do because you know what? Everything is in his hands. Amen. I'll still say, look, I've said this I don't know how many times. If I never see another person get healed, I'll still go to my grave knowing that he is a healer because he's done it for me. Amen. But I don't think we have to worry about that because there is a move of God that's on its way. Hallelujah. I don't care what's wrong with you, what you got going on, God's going to fix it. God's going to take care of it. Listen, the devil's a liar. I said the devil is a liar. Listen, if you don't believe me, believe Jesus. Jesus is the one that said that. He said he is a liar and the father of all lies. So listen, Whenever you got somebody telling you something, when, when the devil's telling you something, I learned this at an early age as a, as a young Christian. Whenever the devil's telling you something bad's going to happen, mark it down that it's not. Why? Because he can't tell the truth. 
Whenever he's telling you something, it's a sure sign that something different's going to happen because he's not capable of telling the truth. So remember those things. So who here tonight has something they want us to pray about tonight? Anybody? Wayne? Amen. Sure will. Everybody remember that tonight. Amen. While we sit here in church, somebody someplace is being martyred for the the cause of Christ, for the word of God. And you know what? How would you feel if you was in that position? We need to pray that their faith does not fail. But through all of this, like, like Paul wanted the Lord to be magnified in his life and in his body, whether it was by life or whether it was by death. And, you know, when, when, when we get that attitude and we come to a place in God that you'll know you've arrived when you get that attitude, when the only thing that matters is what God's will in your life is. Amen? And, and I believe that we're well on our way there because, listen, God's been blessing us too much. He's been doing too much for us. He's been talking to us. He's been speaking to us. And I, I want that to continue. I do, so be praying for our church, be praying for one another and all these needs tonight. Anybody else before we pray? Amen. The Lord knows the need, what it is. Anybody else? All right, Sister Paul. Amen. Remember that young man tonight in prayer when we pray here in just a minute. Anybody else before we pray? All right, let's come gather around the altar. If you can't make it to the altar, bow your head at your seats.
anybody that's singing tonight before we, there she comes. Man, it is hot up here. I ain't going to lie. AC is struggling. There's a place where sins forgiven, where there's cleansing from guilt and from drawing. a road that starts for heaven at the foot of the old rugged cross at the foot of the old rugged cross there's an answer for sweet relief from sadness at the foot of the old rugged cross at the foot of the old rugged cross there's an answer for all of your Lord, and you'll find a friendly welcome at the foot of the old rugged cross, at the foot of the old rugged cross. an answer for all of your loss, and you'll find a friendly welcome at the foot of the old rugged cross. been really fighting me on this so you guys will have to pray for me ever since I took over the youth group he's been nothing but saddening me with everything that he can throw at me but you know what I made my mind up that I'm going to put him under my feet because that's where he belongs under our feet so you all just pray for me I'm kind of out of breath but I'm going to do this anyway okay can you hear me now (laughs) I'm not afraid of him he's out of breath I was in sin's prison, oh, so dark and cold, like a lost sheep wandering from God's eternal fold. Then the door swung open, Jesus spoke to me, I have signed your pardon, you may go free. Jesus signed my part on this I surely know. Took my 
devil's a liar. Amen. Thank you, Sister Martha. Very good. Very good. Amen. Anybody else before we start? All right. I feel kind of cheated like I didn't get to finish this morning, so I, I thought about it, and I'm going to finish it. I'm going to finish it. <laughs> hey, give me a hand. <laughs> hey, man, I'm going to read a couple of new scriptures tonight that I didn't read this morning. You may hear me go back and touch on a couple of things that we talked about this morning, but one thing I've learned, listen, if I don't get the message out, listen, God's got the master plan. He knew who was here this morning. He knew what needed to be done, and that's why it's so important for every one of us in here to learn to follow the leading of the Spirit of God. It's critical. Listen, you got to get familiar with His Spirit. You got to be familiar with His presence. That's what I was talking about this morning with a difference in being saved and having a relationship. If you're in that relationship, listen, you know all the little details about God and how He moves and, and the things that He does. So I want to read tonight, I want to go to the book of Galatians for a couple of verses. <clears throat> then I'll go back to Genesis for one verse. I'm not going to reread everything that I did this morning. I want to go to Galatians first. <clears throat> and chapter 5. Starting in verse 19, dealing and talking about the works of the flesh. And remember, we talked this morning about how Cain represented everything that was flesh and how it was manifested in him. And these verses here are talking about the works of the flesh and naming them and what they are. And the biggest opponent that you will have is your flesh. Now, I want you to think about something for a second. You have one body. Before I read, you have one body. And when you're born, there's nothing you can do about it. You are born in sin. No, there's, there's nothing you can do about it. None of us has to be here, but when you are born, you are born into sin. And there is a seed inside of you of sin. But when you get saved, the Lord washes all those things away. Now listen, he doesn't take away the sin nature. You'll always have it. That's why, why do you think people turn their back and backslide? It lays dormant as long as you keep that flesh under control. But this is what we were entitling the message this morning. And this is what I wanted to get into a little bit this morning. And we were, we were talking, we were going to be preaching on the sin revival or the revival of sin in our bodies. And let's read this now. In verse 19 it says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations. That emulations is jealousy, a lot of jealousies, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murderers, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now let's go back to Genesis chapter 4. I just want to read that last verse that we read this morning. Genesis chapter 4. And I want to read, I want to read verse 8. It says, And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass 
When they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. Let's say amen to God's word tonight. And we want to try to kind of pick up where we left off this morning. But how many of you know tonight that whenever God is doing something, and whenever God is doing something good and doing something big, and there's a flow of the Spirit, that Satan is there ready to counter it. It always happens, and Paul said, when I do good, evil is always present. And you can even take notice in your own lives. I've been there. God will give us, and thank God for this, I thank God for the season of rest that he gives us sometimes. He'll give you a season of peace, and when I come to those times in my life and those seasons in my life, I've learned to really enjoy those times because they're far and few in between. And during those times and those seasons of rest, in the back of my mind, I know that sooner or later, Satan's got something that he's going to throw at me again. And you know what? Somebody likened it one time unto a game of chess. One person will move, then another person will counter it. But here's the thing about God. He's always a couple of steps ahead. And the devil's too stupid to understand that. God is always a couple of steps ahead. And listen, God will let you in on what he is going to do. This is why I say constantly and repeatedly, listen, don't get down and don't drag those things around with you because everything is going to work out in the end. Because like one preacher said, you can't lose with the stuff I use. And listen, God is still on the throne. Hallelujah. Listen, and that across the land tonight, churches have gone to about one service. Churches that used to have, have service on Sunday nights, they just done away with it. I don't think we should give in like Sister Martha said, listen, I'm not giving in. I'm not going to give up. Listen, if you give up halfway through the battle, what you do is you empower the enemy because he looks at you and says, hey, I stopped you one time, and I will stop you again. If you pick up after stopping at something and you try to finish it, it's going to be twice as hard because the devil already has it to put in your mind that, hey, I beat you once, and I'll beat you again. Listen, it's not how you start, but it is how you finish. I've stumbled along the way. You've stumbled along the way, and the devil's called us quitters. He's called us losers. He's called us cowards. But listen, in the end, the only thing that's going to matter is what God calls me, and it's going to call me a good and a faithful servant. That's the only thing that matters to me tonight. I'm going to make it home one way or another. I'm going to mortify the deeds of the flesh because the flesh is going to rear its ugly head from time to time. But it's up to you and I to stay hidden behind the old rugged cross. I said it. we've got to stay hidden in Christ. Listen, there is something inside that that wants to come out. I said there's something inside that lays dormant, and every once in a while he rears its ugly head, but I'm not going to yield my members unto sin, but I'm going to yield my members as righteousness unto God, as those that are alive from the dead. Hallelujah. I was once dead in the trespass of my sin, but not anymore. I'm a new creature. I'm a new creation. Listen, I don't 
don't like the things that I used to do. I don't entertain the things that I used to do. But praise God, I've got a new life. I've got a new chance. I embrace the things of God. I embrace the word of God. I embrace the presence and the spirit of God because it's the spirit of God that makes the difference in your life and in mine. If you love them, raise your hands and praise the king. What are we talking about tonight? Talk, listen, whenever, I said it, whenever God is doing something, look at, and I look for it in church all the time. How many times have you seen it? God will start doing something and the devil will try to break it all up. Listen, don't be the one that yields yourself to the man of sin to try to stop the move of God. What are you talking about? Listen, we went deep sea fishing last week. And I got thinking about this earlier today. And when we got out there, and it was time to start casting out and start fishing and everything, they, they brought a, a bait bucket around and sat in front of you. And they were using squid that had been soaked in salt, and it was tough. It was tough stuff. You couldn't even hardly get it on the hook. And the guy who brought the bait around came around, and I'm always listening, trying to listen and, and, and catch something and, and, and try to further myself. I've learned that God will speak to you in times when, listen, You've got to be aware at all times. God will speak to you in some of the places that you would think that he wouldn't even speak to you in. And he spoke to me, and I didn't realize it at the time. But when I got studying and, and reading tonight, he brought this back to me. And the, the man who was bringing the bait around came around and again and he was selling stuff this time. And he had different things cut up and different things in a bag, and you had to buy it. And he said this. He said, listen, I'm selling this stuff here in a bag for those of you that want to use this bait. I'm going to go slow with this. To try to catch a different species baiting it for a different species. And when I got reading about the works of the flesh here, the Lord brought that back to me and just opened this whole thing up. When you go through this list, there's a reason why I stopped and, and translated the one word there that meant jealousy. But when you go through that list, through that entire works of the flesh, listen, Inside of everybody here, every one of those things exists, whether you want to admit it or not. It's there. So what does Satan do? He get different kind of bait he'll throw out there to try to draw out different works of the flesh in your life. He'll bait one person with something to try to draw out lust. He'll bait somebody else with something different to try to draw out envy and in strife and all these different things. And I got thinking about that. This man brought different stuff around to try to catch a different species. And I said, dear Lord, it's exactly how the devil baits us to bring out something different. Listen, what, did he, what was Cain baited with? Think about it for a second. What was he baited with? He got awfully jealous, didn't he? He got awful jealous of his brother because God accepted his sacrifice and not his. So the, the devil baited Cain with jealousy, and he baited him with something else, and that was murder. And guess what? He drew it out. I'm preaching to you. He drew it right out of him. Listen, 
Cain represents everything flesh. Like I said this morning, listen, the flesh will slay you if you allow it to. And during this move of God, listen, 1 Timothy said this. He said, take heed unto yourselves. I'm speaking this to everybody here tonight. Take heed to your own self that Satan doesn't dangle something in front of you and draw something out of you that needs to stay inside and needs to stay dead, stay dead to sin. Listen, there's a great move and a great blessing of God coming our way, and Satan wants to revive sin. This is what we're talking about tonight. He wants a revival of sin in your life because he knows that God will not bless sin one way. Listen, there is no way God will bless sin. So if Satan can dangle something in front of you and draw it out of you, you cannot be in the blessing. Now you look at the one verse that we read in Genesis tonight. And I've said a couple of times just to stress the point that Cain represents flesh. And we know that flesh cannot please God. And as I got reading this and the Lord opened my eyes up to it, listen, I've read this story I don't know how many times during the years. I've preached on it I don't know how many times. But I never saw it in this light like the Lord showed me. And this is what I was really wanting to try to get across this morning. Listen, folks, if you live through the flesh, you will die. That is the Word of God. Satan is trying every way possible to draw something bad out of you to get in the way of what God wants to do in our midst, to what God wants to do in your house and in your home life, and folks are falling for it. This is why God is bringing these things out so you're not caught unaware when these things happen. Listen, he's dang he'll dangle something in front of you to try to get you to speak. Listen, and, and one of the, the bad things is, a lot of folks think they're right and justified in what they're doing. But listen, it does not matter what you think is justified. It's what God thinks is justified. There is a way that seems right unto a man. It may seem right what you're doing, but the end of those ways is death, the Bible says. So Cain and Abel one day are talking in the field. And I want you to pay close attention to this. This will hit hard. And they begin to talk. It says that Cain, which represents flesh, began to talk to Abel. Mm. Do you hear what I'm saying? Cain represents flesh. That flesh began to talk to Abel, the one who had just pleased God. The one who had just brought those two sacrifices and God accepted it. The one who was in the right. And listen, he's out here in this field. And I couldn't believe this one I seen. I could, read it so many times and it never appeared to me. Out there talking with something that represents flesh. Listen, when your flesh starts talking to you and you start listening, you are in trouble. And look what happened to Abel out there in the field. The Bible says that Cain rose up against him. And you can look at it in the, in the spirit wise. Cain, the flesh, rose up against Abel, righteous Abel, the one that pleased God, and slew him. The flesh slew 
Abel in that field. Mm -mm -mm. I've seen it too many times over the years. I've seen it way too many times with things repeating itself. And this is why, listen, we'll get up here week after week, month after month, year after year, and preach our hearts out, and, and people teach their hearts out to try to get people to understand that there is things going on that you don't realize that Satan has prepared for you, traps and snares that he has prepared for you, and you do not have to go through them. You do not have to fall victim to them the footsteps of a good man, the Bible says, are ordered by the Lord. It makes me glad when I lay down at night and go to sleep that God ordered my footsteps even under the side of my bed. When I get up at night, he orders those footsteps. And when I wake up in the morning to walk out the door, guess what? He ordered those footsteps as well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wish you could hear me this night. Oh, and Satan's got something in front of me. God will take my footsteps and I'll walk right around it. Oh, praise God. Satan will come back and counter God. Oh, hallelujah. This path that God took in, I'll put a roadblock there so God will make another one and I'll lead my footsteps in this direction. And pretty soon I've been there. It feels like you're surrounded on every side and there's no way out. To, where's God going to lead you to now? Oh, hallelujah. This is where the power of God comes into play at. If he can't lead you around it, the power of God will push right through it. and It'll make a way even where there seems to be no way. I said the gates of hell are not going to prevail even though they're set up in my path. The power of God is too big and too strong. Satan can't hold it down. Oh, I'm telling you. Oh, I'm telling you something tonight. If you do what God wants you to do, if you stay on the right path and stay out of the flesh, there's a great blessing that's coming your way that you cannot contain. If you love him, raise your hands and praise the king. He's good to us. I'm not going to let Satan draw something out of me. Listen, the Bible says sin shall have no dominion over you. This is why we need to watch every little thing that we do, every little thing that we say. You don't want your liberties to become a stumbling block to somebody who is weak. I don't want it to be on me to be somebody's downfall. I don't want it to be on me to stop a move of God in its, in its, in its progress. God have mercy on the person that does. Let me say it again. God have mercy on the person that stops that flow. We need to mortify the deed. What is my, you know what mortar is? Do you know what it does? It gets hard, real hard. Mortify the deeds of the flesh. It, it, you, you put bricks and blocks on it so they can't move. So the Bible saying, mortify all those things that we read about so they can't move in your life. Hear what I'm saying. When Satan dangles something out there and tries to bait, tries to bait you into saying something with your tongue that's going to get you in trouble or stir something up, mortify it. Amen, Brother Mike. Is this all right? Is this good preaching? I'm trying to preach something that's going to help us, that's going to make us better, that's going to help God move stronger and better in our midst. It's going to help you in your home lives. It's going to help you on your job. Take heed unto yourselves. Your flesh is your worst enemy. Why do you think we're in this position after all? Why are we in this position? It's because flesh got in the way and didn't listen to the will of God. That's why things are like they are. 
That's why people are like they are. But you know what? When it all comes down to it, at the end of the day, I want to be able to say, Lord, I've done just as much as I possibly could for you. God, I preached as hard as I could for you and for the benefit of everybody else, Lord. I cut off everything that I possibly could. God, I tried to lead the folks as, as best as I possibly could. Lord, I mortified the deeds of the flesh as best I could. Because at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, listen, I want to help somebody make it home. You should want to help somebody make it home. Listen, I'm just going to be playing with you. This is life, and life's tough. There ain't nobody in here exempt from hardships. We all go through it. Life can be cruel at times, downright cruel at times. People can be downright cruel at times to other ones. I don't want to hurt anybody. If I can't help you, I'm not going to hurt you. Brother Powell used to say that to me all the time. You've got to come to a place in God. Listen, and I've learned this. You've heard me say it before. You'll hear me say it again. You cannot worry about people's opinions of you. I don't. They didn't die for me. They didn't save me. There's only one that I'm worried about. Words roll off me just like water off a duck's back. Listen, if you worry about things folks say about you, you'll never do anything for God. Listen, Jesus, he is the perfect example. At the age of 12, he was razor-focused on what his mission was. Didn't care that his mother and father had gone a day's journey or however many days it was. Jesus stayed behind. And when they finally found him, he was in the temple teaching. Twelve years old, busy about the father's business. Oh, my Lord. Doesn't that put some of us to shame? Twelve years old and busy about the father, not worried about. Listen, he was a 12-year-old boy, but he wasn't doing things that other 12-year-olds was doing. He was sent on a mission, and praise God, a few years later, he finished that mission when he hung on the cross and said, Father, it is finished. It is finished in your hands. I commit my spirit. Then he bowed his head, and he gave up the ghost, praise God, and there was a great shaking. You want to talk about a revival? The graves of those who held the dead in that day. The Bible says when Jesus came out of the tomb, they got up also and they walked around the holy city and showed their self to many. Hallelujah. That's just what the, that's just the way it is when you serve God. Let him resurrect you tonight. Let him kill off that sin in your life. Let him make you somebody that you're proud of. Hallelujah. I'm not proud of what I used to be. I was uh, somebody who was not nice to be with. I was somebody who was very ignorant and very strange. But you know what? I'm a new creature. I'm a new creation. And I'm proud of who I am in him. And I'll forever lift up the blood-stained banner of Calvary. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Neither should you. I'm not ashamed to bow my head and give thanks over what God has blessed me with in public. I'm not ashamed when I feel his presence come on to lift my hands up and praise him in public. They ought to be ashamed because they don't do it. 
You see, we've got our, our ways of thinking all mixed up. Oh, we can't do that. That'll be a shame. A shame to what? Thanking God for something he blessed you with? Oh, I can't let the Spirit of God move on me and speak in tongues out in public. What are they going to think? Who cares what they think? They should be ashamed because they're not doing it. This is the attitude that the church needs to have. Listen, he made me the head. He made you the head. He didn't make you the tail. What does the head contain? It contains a brain, a part that's intelligent, a part that thinks, a part that sees. Think about that for a minute. That's what God's made you tonight. That's what he's made you. You know, a lot of people think just because you're a Christian, just because you're a child of God, that you have to be the hunted. No, I turn that around. I'm the hunter, and so should you be hunting what? Hunting folks to bring in. Hey, hear me what I'm saying. Hunting sis, uh, souls that are sin sick. Uh, hunting out folks uh, that are down and that are depressed uh, and those that need deliverance. Uh, Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor. Jesus went hunting for them. Listen to what I'm telling you tonight. Uh, there's no shame in having problems. Uh, the shame is keeping that problem when you can go to the man of Galilee and get it all straightened out. So in closing tonight, listen, don't let that thing revive inside of you. Don't let that sin revive inside of you and come out. I guarantee you I've asked for a show of hands here tonight. About who here is Satan dangling some kind of thought in front of your mind to draw something out of you? I guarantee you every hand would go up, including mine. What you'll get with me is complete honesty and realism. Listen, just because I'm called to preach doesn't mean I don't have problems. I probably have a lot more. I'll be downright honest with you. But you know what? The call of God to me, I cherish the call of God. Listen, there's people in this life, and listen, every one of us in here are called by God to do something. You have a call on your life. Don't let the devil tell you that you don't. And people in this life can achieve great heights and great statures, presidents, senators, kings, queens, but no title or no stature is as great as being called of God. And you're called of God if you love him, raise your hands. And praise the King. You are called of God tonight. You're a royal priesthood. and You have royalty flowing through you tonight. Hallelujah. So when the devil comes to you and telling you you're nothing and you're not going to make it, just say, devil, I am called, I am chosen, and I am ordained of God. It's signed, it's sealed, it's delivered unto the day of redemption, and there is nothing that you can do about it. Stand with me tonight. Thank you, Jesus. I preach my heart out to you. I've delivered exactly what he's delivered to me. Take something. Listen, what I always do, I, I make sure I take something, a piece of every lesson that I hear, every message that I hear. I take a piece of it. Now, listen, we're not going to remember everything. But Take something that the Lord was ministering to you with and about, and you take that and you hide it away in here, and it becomes a part of you. And at some point in time, that which you've heard and that which you have hidden away is going to come back at some point in time to help you. Why? Because you retained it, because you had, listen, 
You can't give something to somebody if you don't have anything. Retain a piece of everything that you hear. Bow your heads with me tonight. Precious God, we have stood and delivered what you would have us to deliver tonight. Lord, it's our prayer that each and everybody in here, Lord, whatever they're in need of, whatever their problem is, Lord, I pray tonight on their behalf, Lord, for you to fix what's going on. Strengthen that which needs to be strengthened. Heal that which needs to be healed. And with every head bowed and every eye closed, I always give altar calls. Hey, listen, I don't know anybody's hearts. I don't know anybody's lives. So if you're here tonight and you do not know the Lord, maybe you did it one time and you've drifted away. Maybe sin has revived in your life. If you're here tonight and you want to make things right, I'm going to ask you to get out of your seat and come down to this aisle, and we're going to pray and get things all straightened out. The storms rage high. While we tarry the just for a few minutes. Clouds rise. They don't worry. Anybody anywhere want to come kneel down and pray? I'm Maybe you let things come back into your life. In Listen, this is the time to get it straightened out. That's why we're here. There's no shame in it. The shame is not doing anything about it. No, Anybody while we tarry. Can harm me. Amen. If not, does anybody need prayer for anything tonight? If you do, come, we'll pray with you, pray for you. If not, just lift your hands and worship just for a few more minutes. So let the storm Make it personal when you praise them. The dark Make it personal rise. when you worship them. They won't worry me. Hallelujah. Because I'm sheltered safe. Isn't that a good right feeling? Then. Knowing you're sheltered. The arms of God. He walks with me. There's nothing in this world can harm me. For I'm sheltered in the arms of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm sheltered safe within the arms of God. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand to praise tonight if you appreciate him. And once again, I can say, truly, it's been good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Don't forget your youth service Wednesday. Invite somebody. Encourage Sister Martha. Encourage her. Pray for her. You know, there's a reason why the devil battles you in things. He knows what, listen, he knows what's ahead. He knows what's in store. Elsie, listen. He wouldn't fight it if there was nothing worth fighting for. So keep that in mind and be there if you can. Be here Thursday night if you can. So with having said that, shake hands one with another, and we'll see you next time.